Hey guys, today's color I think is perfect for fall. We're going to be doing a partial foliage and we're going to do it nice and heavy around the face but still leaving her really rooty and dimensional which is going to be perfect for fall and low maintenance hair. You can follow me over on Instagram at Christy at the Cottage. Okay, here's my clients before. You can see it's been a while since she's been in. We're going to retouch her blonde and then also give her a trim at the end of the service. Okay, so the client that I'm going to be working on right now, um, she has very dark, very thick, very coarse hair. And so she lifts very warm. I know everybody has warm undertones, but because her hair is so coarse, it kind of tends to be a little bit warmer. Um, she wants to go brighter, but not necessarily blonde. So right now we're going to brighten up what she already has and add a little bit more blonde. We're going to still maintain a lot of roots and I'm going to use my short scoff blonde me with Olaplex and 20 volume. And we're just basically going to do a foliage to try and prevent as much warmth as possible while we're lifting her. All right, here's our bleach that we're using, Schwarzkopf Blonde Me with 20 volume. And if you haven't used this bleach before, I highly recommend it, especially for clients that you might have a harder time lifting. This has really great lifting power, and I can always get my difficult clients that maybe have more coarse or darker hair, I can always lift them really nicely with this bleach. To start her service, we're going directly up into the hairline for her money piece. And this is the only part of the service where we're going to be taking it up pretty high. We are going to weave it and back comb it. So that's going to create a little bit more of a cushion and a shadow just right at the roots. So we are taking it up pretty high, but there is going to be just a really soft little shadow directly where the roots are. And because we're trying to brighten her up a little bit we are running the bleach through the ends and I normally wouldn't recommend doing this with somebody if they have more fine hair but because her hair is so coarse it doesn't you guys have no idea how coarse her hair is it does not come through on video um I trust that her hair is okay and in good condition that it can handle lightening up a little bit more. So that's why we're running the lightener through the ends. So we're just gonna put this last foil in for her money piece section right on her hairline. And again, you can see we're doing a pretty heavy weave and that's because we wanna get her nice and bright. She likes to be pretty rooty and low maintenance, but she does want it to be nice and bright where it counts. So that's why just right in this little front money piece section, we're going to do it a little bit heavier. And I'm going to reposition her part. I like doing a little bit more of a zigzag down the center where they part their hair. That way I can make sure that wherever she parts her hair, like if some hair falls on one side or the other, I can make sure that the brightness is going to be evenly distributed. So... We're just going to do a little bit of a heavier section, a little bit thicker of a weave, and we're going to back comb it, but I'm not going to take the blonde all the way up to her roots, but I am going to bring it up a little bit closer towards the front of her face, and I'm going to make sure that the blonde is connected where the money piece is going to fall, so I feel like this is really great to make sure that you have like balance all the way throughout the hair where you have balayage even if you have the hair really rooty and low maintenance I still like to make sure that the money piece section connects to the blonde on the side that way there's no like dark holes in the head or anything and at least we know that she's gonna have like even brightness all the way around it's just gonna like flow a little bit darker towards the back but that blonde is going to connect to the front so everything is going to flow nice and evenly throughout the hair you guys know that i generally don't like to do open air balayage and i feel like especially with clients like this that have 
maybe more coarse hair or their hair is a little bit darker, say like anything five and below. In my experience, and maybe I'm just not using the right products or whatever, um, but I feel like I get better lift when I use a foil and I insulate the hair. Um, I feel like we can get it closer to like a level 9, 10, where if I just do like an open air balayage or if, even if I just do like a hand-painted balayage, but then I like wrap it with plastic, I just feel like I don't get as good of lift as I want. So that's why I like to go ahead and always use a foil, especially for clients that maybe have harder hair to lift. I feel like this kind of ensures that you'll get a better blonde and better lift for the service if you do more of a foilage versus a balayage, which in my opinion, they're kind of the same thing. You can get it to look just the same and have the same outcome and more of a natural or dimensional color um, or have more of a balayage look to it. But I don't think you necessarily have to leave it like open air, which I feel like some people are very like, it has to be hand painted and open air for them to be happy with it or to feel like they're getting something fancy. I don't know. Um, but that's why I always like to use foils because it gets a better lift. And I feel like that's why a lot of my clients come to me because they can get the same look as what somebody else might do for a balayage, but their color is going to be a little bit brighter or a little bit more blonde versus having too much warmth in the hair. So um, now we're going to move on to her side and I'm doing a pretty thick section right here, but we're going to back comb it really heavily and then weave it. And that's going to ensure that she's still going to get a good blend, even though we're doing like a pretty thick section. It's just going to be this one piece right here. And that front little piece is going to lay out, which is going to help blend the hair also. So it's not going to be really as heavy as it appears it's going to be just because we have that back comb in there plus we're weaving it and that hair is falling out directly on the front of the hairline so it's going to help soften it up a little bit too. All right, so we're going to continue our foliage on the sides now, and this is going to be kind of a layered foliage, which meaning you can see that top foil that we did before this one, the very, very first ones on the side that we did, we took the blonde up a little bit higher. This one falls directly underneath that, and we don't have any subsections in between, but you can see that I'm not taking the blonde up quite as high. We're just going to kind of go over what was already there. So we're just going to be basically brightening that up a little bit more, but not adding any more blonde to it. And you can see how much roots are left behind. So even though there's no subsections in between, she still has a lot of those roots that are going to be preserving that depth in her hair that she's going to need. That's going to create that look as if there was a subsection um, so that top one is up a little bit higher and then these second ones that we're doing and I'm just double checking, always double check your sections if you need to. And then this one is going to have a little bit more depth in the hair because we're not going to take the blonde quite up as high as we did with that first top foliage section that we did.
I know I didn't mention before, but I like to grab this whole back section and I'm taking a pretty large weave of hair and that's going to connect to the side pieces that we did. So when the hair falls down, everything's going to connect together. And that was the very, very first foil that I did in this back section. For this section, again, I'm just kind of grabbing the hair where it falls. And then I did that small little weave out is going to be a little bit of a subsection um, in between these two foils. And I'm going to do mostly through like the mid section through the ends. But I'm not going to go too high up because that first section that we did is a little bit higher up in the roots. And then this is going to help preserve a little bit of the depth and dimension in her hair and give her more of a rootier look because we're not taking the blonde up quite as high in these underneath foils that we're doing. All right, now we're back on the sides again, and I'm just kind of grabbing random weaves. Like, we're not trying to be super precise or perfect. I feel like kind of picking up random pieces of hair and having a larger weave that you're doing creates more of a dimensional look versus if you're too precise with your weaves that you're grabbing, then that almost creates too much of a blended look, and then you lose your dimension. So... Just be really cautious of that. If you do two small weaves, then it's going to look way too blended. But if you just take kind of random big pieces of hair, then you're able to create a little bit more dimensional blonde pieces. So um, we are going to take this section underneath a little bit higher. Not too much higher, but just a little bit more. And that's because um, we're grabbing a little bit of a subsection in between. So that's going to leave a little bit more of the depth in the hair that we're needing. So it's going to be okay to go up a little bit higher because we have that depth in between that's going to separate this foil from the section that we did before. Um, and then also I like working around the head. A lot of people I feel like will do one whole section of the head and then they'll move to the other side of the head. And I feel like that works really good for somebody that maybe is naturally really light where you know that you can get good even lift. But I feel like for clients that have darker hair or if their hair is a little bit more coarse, I like starting at the top that way you can start processing right away. I don't like leaving that for last because then you feel like you're waiting forever for that top section. Um... So I like starting at the top that way that gets processing the fastest and we know that it's going to get nice and light. And then I like going back and forth and side to side to make sure that everything is getting even lift. So then at the end of the service, if there's these underneath pieces, usually we'll catch up because it has the heat kind of trapped underneath. So... You, where if I started down here, it's going to process really fast anyways because it's the first section that we did. But then because it also has all that heat trapped underneath from the hair laying on top of it, it's going to speed up even faster. But the section that we would leave off at at the very top, if that's where we finish at, that doesn't have any heat to help it um, process. So it's going to go really slow. So Starting at the top, I feel like especially for clients that have darker hair is what I like to do because it gets that top layer processing and then by the time we get through the ends over here, this is going to catch up because everything that's falling on top of it, oh my god, my dog just shaked and or shook and I hope that doesn't sound super loud in the video. Anyways, um, I feel like the underneath is going to catch up with the top anyways because it's got the insulation from all of the heat from everything laying on top of it.
And now we're just going to throw in these last few sections and we'll be done with the service. And you guys can see that I'm taking a pretty big piece for all of her sections mostly. Um, and I feel like because she has dark hair and her goal is not to be super bright blonde, it's okay to do a little bit larger of sections. I know that she's going to lift really warm anyways, um, but her goal is not to be super icy or cool. She likes having a little bit of warmth in her hair. So if I was worried about having like really white, really cool outcome, then I would definitely take smaller sections. So now that we're done with our application, we're just going to go back through and reapply wherever we need to. Um, I have had clients ask me, why am I reapplying? And that's to me is kind of shocking when people ask that, like you can see how warm that is. If I didn't go back and reapply, then she would probably be stuck at like a level eight. Don't be afraid to remix some bleach if you have to. I mean, you're going to charge for it anyways. It's part of the service. You're using extra bleach, just charge like extra 15, 20 bucks for the extra bowl. But you can see here that if I didn't go back through and reapply in these areas and she'd be stuck at like a level eight when we're trying to get more to like a level nine or so. Um, but I'm kind of shocked actually when I hear that clients haven't had their stylist go back through and reapply the bleach before. And that's probably why people are not able to get as good of lift or maybe they're stuck with like an extra warm caramel tone is because they're not reapplying when they need to. So Sometimes I'll I will reapply like three times. It every client is different, but don't feel like you can't reapply if you need to. Always go back through and check. So you can see here that she got a lot better lift. Um, she probably ended up processing for a little bit over an hour just because her hair is so coarse. So um right now we're gonna go into mixing her, her toner. Okay, so I just got done washing my client out and I'd say we got her nice and light. She's kind of like a level, um, kind of like a nine, almost pretty good nine. Um, lots of warmth, obviously, but I kind of talked to her about the warmth in her hair and if she felt okay with it. And, um, she said she liked having the warmth in her hair, so I'm glad to know that that's not something that we're going to have to, like, try to fight and, you know, make it nice and ashy and whatever. So it's nice to know that we can just work with the warm tones that she already has. So I'm not trying to get her super ashy or anything. Um, I think I'm going to tone her with... I think we're going to tone her with Agora Vibrance. Um, I might just use my Agora Vibrance, um, 9 and some 951, and I think I'm just gonna do, like, maybe just a quarter of my formulation, the 951, just to give it, like, a little, a little bit of coolness in it. That way it tones it down a little bit, but I don't want to take away the brightness from it or anything, which if you have warmth in your um, in your formulation, then it will stay nice and bright and it will look, you know, lighter and brighter or whatever. And if you add too much ash or coolness to your formulation, then the blonde is going to look much more toned down and not as light. And she definitely wants to feel a lot brighter and lighter at this time. So um, just using like the level nine neutral with a little bit of coolness just to make it not feel so brassy or so warm so just like kind of nice and bright and even but not necessarily cool but not too warm whatever so i'm going to use that and then i'm going to use um my six volume and i'm just going to do uh ounce per ounce with that and one thing that I need to start doing is wearing gloves. I'm so bad at this. And it's because, I, you know, you feel like you can't really get in there and feel the hair and, you know, move product around is good. But let me tell you guys, I've been doing hair for like 18 years, maybe. 
And this year especially, like I'm feeling like I'm getting allergies towards chemicals. So don't be like me for the whole, you know, 15 plus years where you never wear gloves. Unless you're doing, you know, applying a permanent color or something like that. But when I tone, I never wear a glove. And then I think that's really starting to affect me. But I've heard other people say that the Agora Vibrance, like, they, it irritates their skin too. Or like Schwarzkopf in general. So I don't know if it's the Schwarzkopf, but I just need to wear gloves. So anyways, little lesson of don't take after me. So um, we're just going to mix this really quickly. Go apply her toner and probably let it sit for like 10 minutes. All right, so we're going to do the majority of the level nine with just a smidge of the 951, just to cool it down a little bit. All right, so we put that on in the shampoo bowl and let it sit for about 10 minutes or so. And you can see that she still has a lot of warmth in her hair, but it's not like a brassy warmth. It's more of like a controlled warmth that she has in her hair. So that's why adding that little bit of the 951 is just going to help counteract just a little bit of the warmer tones and... um kind of neutralize that a little bit but we're still gonna she's still gonna be left with enough warmth that she's not gonna feel like she's you know she likes the warmer tones she's gonna be left with warmer tones but she's not gonna feel brassy And I figured that I'd throw in her haircut just because I know I don't do a lot of haircuts in my videos. So every now and then when I capture it, I just end up throwing it in for the video for you guys. So we're basically just doing like a nice blunt one length cut. But I, I'm going to go through with my texturizing shears and just kind of texture through the ends. That way it kind of gives it a little bit of choppiness but also kind of breaks up the one length so it doesn't look too blunt All right, I wanted you guys to see a little bit where that front part is, how we kind of backcombed it up in the money piece area. There's just a slight cushion there right at the roots and then right on her hairline here, how we did that bigger backcombed weave where you kind of would feel like it'd be too heavy right on the hairline, but you could see, I don't know if you guys could notice, but it still is really soft and it's not as heavy as you would think it would be. But you can also see that the rest of her hair for how big of weaves that we were taking, it blends really nicely and there's not anywhere where it's just too like chunky or doesn't blend and like soften up with her roots.
So how I was saying in the very beginning of the video where we're going to drop these pieces down a little bit further in the crown area, but the front is going to connect with the money piece so that way everything like flows nicely around her head. This is kind of what I was talking about where you can see that she's still nice and rooty, but when she's turned on the sides, you can see that those side pieces connect with the front. So everything flows really nicely together, but she doesn't have it like too high up in the root area or anything. So this is perfect for a service like this where somebody wants to be able to have like a low maintenance color, but they want to brighten up. Um, she's nice and bright, like right around the face, but then she still has a lot of depth and dimension in throughout her hair and in the crown area still. So she'll be able to go quite a while without feeling like she needs to come in anytime soon unless it's just to like blend the money piece or retouch that part or whatever so here's her before again and then here is her after lots of warmth in her hair but you can see that it's not brassy or anything adding that just a smidge of a cooler tone in there or or yeah that cooler tone in there the 951 just kind of softened it a little bit to where she doesn't feel too caramely or too brassy um, it's just a nice soft warmth. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you guys liked it and don't forget to like and subscribe.